The Senate asks President Rodrigo Duterte to certify the proposed Bangsamoro Basic Law as urgent. Senate President Tito Soto and Senate Majority Leader Mig Zubiri, in a letter to Duterte, says the chamber seeks to pass the bill on final reading by Saturday. The last session day is expected to be on Wednesday. Once the president issues a certification, the Senate can approve the bill on second and third readings on the same day, fast-tracking the measure's passage in time for Duterte's third State of the Nation address in July. After approval and final reading, the bill would go through bicameral conference committee meetings to reconcile it with the House's version. The reconciled bill will then be ratified in plenary by both houses. Soto says the ratification of the bicam report might happen in the morning of July 23, in time for the opening of the third regular session of the 17th Congress and President Duterte's sauna. He adds, quote, The bicam can't be convened next week. For sure, there are big differences between the House and Senate versions. Former Special Action Force Chief Benjamin Lusad tries to save himself from the 59.8 million peso SAF allowances mess by passing the blame to his staff. SAF troopers are entitled to allowances of 30 pesos a day or 900 pesos a month each. Current SAF Budget Officer Dominic Bacay says the funds that were missing up until January 2018 amounted to 59.8 million pesos. Lusad, during the Senate probe into the controversy Tuesday, claims he was not very informed that millions worth of allowances had not been given to thousands of troopers. He says he knew that the unit held millions, but he denies knowing that they came from delayed releases. The former SAF chief also says his knowledge of the unit's finances was limited to regularly asking his budget officer, Andrzej Dison, whether the unit had money to spare for SAF activities. Lucet says, quote, When I asked my staff if funds are available, he would answer the positive. I had always the belief that those funds were available for those kinds of activities. He is referring to training and fellowship programs for the staff. But his budget officer, Dizon, deflects the blame, explaining the release or restriction of allowances is ultimately Lucet's decision. Dizon says allowances are only released with the clearance of the staff director. Dizon also admits he held on to 37 million pesos even after he was reassigned. He earlier returned the amount to the SAF. The former SAF budget officer says the 37 million pesos he returned came from delayed allowances from 2016 to 2017 up until he was reassigned in January 2018. He says he kept the money for months because the SAF did not immediately have a replacement for him as budget officer. Dizon also admits he had done it without the instruction of LUSAD. Malacanang says it is satisfied with the rehabilitation of Marawi City so far. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque makes a statement a day before the first anniversary of the Marawi siege. It will also be a year since President Rodrigo Duterte declared martial law in Mindanao in response to the siege. Roque says 70% of Marawi residents have returned to the city, occupying temporary or permanent housing built by the government. But he admits it will take more time to rebuild the most affected portion of Marawi City, the so-called main battle area. Two stalwarts of the Philippines' case against China on Monday urged the Philippine government to file a diplomatic protest against the landing of Chinese bombers in the South China Sea. Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio says failure to protest means the Philippines is consenting to the militarization. Former Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario agrees with Carpio. Del Rosario calls on Filipinos to speak loudly, clearly, and with one voice in promoting our national security. Carpio and Del Rosario issue their statements as the Foreign Affairs Department chooses not to publicly condemn China over its bombers at Paracel Islands. Vietnam, not the Philippines, claims to Paracel Islands, but nearly all of the Philippines falls within the radius of the bombers. Unlike the Philippines, Vietnam slams these Chinese bombers Monday. But Carpio warns the Philippines should not fall prey to China's three-warfare strategy to intimidate into submission other claimant states, including the Philippines. He adds any self-respecting sovereign state will formally protest such encroachment on its sovereignty and sovereign rights. Del Rosario says the Duterte administration should revisit its foreign policy. He says, quote, as we had previously said, we are opposed to war, as we should be. But if threatened by the use of force, we should be ready to inflict at the very least a bloody nose on any attacker who is out to harm us. The Kensington Palace shares Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's official portraits, taken in the green drawing room of Windsor Castle after their royal wedding last Saturday. In the first photo, the new Duke and Duchess of Sussex are surrounded by the British royal family, Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, Prince Charles and Camilla, Prince William and Catherine, their page boys and bridesmaids, and Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland. 
There's also the couple surrounded by the page boys and bridesmaids, including Prince George and Princess Charlotte. The last photo was Harry and Meghan happily posing on a stone staircase. Kensington Palace is where the royal foundations of Harry and Meghan, as well as Harry's brother, Prince William, and wife Catherine are based. Mm -hmm.